Oh, man, I hate Mondays. Nah, man, it's Tuesday. Wait, 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 wait. What day is it? You know what day it is. Tuesday. Tuesday, Tuesday. Oh, fuck yeah. It's time for Bruise Day Tuesday. Brought to you by the Cellar and Six Pack Store. Here is Drez and Huck. Mm-hmm. Bruce Day Tuesday, it is Huckster. Bruce Day Tuesday. And not a good day. It is a good day. It's brought to you by the Cellar Restaurant and Six Pack Store in downtown Blacksburg. I am Drez. I'm Huck not- is my partner in beer crime. Oh, uh, was it a bad pour or was it a bad can? Bad can. It's oh, a foamer. Boy. This is one of those things that, like I said, these these beers have traveled quite a ways. I, I figured, you know, they might not all be in the best condition. In fact, you might notice I I kept the one with the big dent in the top of the can. Oh, nice. That's uh, nice. I, I can't see better days. But well, this is Plainsman, and it's spelled P L A I N. Oh, it's pretty plain because it's a logger, I think. Oh, logger. All right. Well, this one's yeah. this one's got some floaties in it, so that might mean it's hashtag unfiltered. It is a hazy IPA from Matchless. Um, I think it's pronounced Raku, Rakau, Rakal me this. Ray Cow. Ray Cow. Ray Cow. I looked it up. That's the type of hops, I believe. Yes, back here on the hops, it says Ray Cow, Citra, and Enigma. It's got Pilsner, flaked oats, malts, a little juice for yeast, and the descriptors say, now riddle me this, hop man. <laughs> this is brewed and packaged by Matchless. Tumwater out of Washington. It is a product of the USA. Store cold, drink fresh. Uh, coming in at 6.7%. This is made by Structures Brewing out of Bellingham, Washington, which I've seen. I think that must be up near Seattle somewhere. I can't I can't really say. I'm not a geographer. I haven't been to Washington. Maybe just over the over the bridge into there, maybe just maybe just up, popped, up, popped up in, in the mountains. Just to say I, you, I cut over a little bit. You must have, because I know you've always said you've been to the lower 48. Yeah. So yeah, you must so, have at least placed your... Yeah. When you actually, that's a good question. I think we did. We were in, we were Portland and we drove up to Washington and had a beer just to say we did. Actually, the hop farm we went to might have been in Washington State. So when you say you've been to the lower 48, do you count that as, do you have to stay the night there? You have to just step foot on there you have to drink a beer in there what what's your uh i try to drink qualification i try to drink a beer but i mean i don't think you can count i have never counted landing in the airport and then leaving i haven't counted that so but you could have a beer in the airport yeah but i mean still that's not really i think you have to drive in it okay you have to drive in it that that in order to be count the state you have to drive on one of their highways so for you know, when we got the RV, we got like that, that like, you know, the, the sticker, of yeah, the map, and yeah. then, you know, so on the RV. And our rule was that we had to stay a night in the state for it to go up there. Well, of course, it's on an RV. See, I'm, I just, so, I'm so, in a car. Okay. So you're talking <laughs> about just, so you're saying your own personal checklist of. Yeah, if I drive, because like, who wants to stay in Nebraska? Have you been there? We went to Nebraska. You spent the night? Yeah. Why? We were in Lincoln for a, a good few days. All right, I'm just saying, I'm not, wasn't a fan. Iowa, Nebraska, you know, you can skip those states. Oh, we did Iowa too. <laughs> we, no, we didn't skip them, man. We hit we hit quite a few <laughs> of those flyover states, which honestly, a lot of those were some of the ones I like the best. Yeah, well, some of the ones of the further west I kind of like. Because you got to remember, like, when you're thinking about what you're, the traveling that you're used to, this was during COVID. So those those more rural like open states yeah. were a lot like cooler and had, you know, while you know, like going to big cities and stuff was just kind of not fun because oh, no, there was nothing not. you could do. Right. So those other states were honestly usually a little bit better in my opinion, you know. Well, some of the bigger cities. They're more my people too. Some certain bigger cities you could have thrown some Molotov cocktails and looted some stores. Again, we did not go to Portland for that very reason. <laughs> we wanted to avoid uh, such things. Mostly peaceful. Mostly uh, peaceful. But uh, but yeah, so that was kind of the rule of thumb was if we stayed we stayed in a state, then we would get it on the map in the RV, which really sucked because when you look at it, we basically have all the lower ones except for Georgia. Like We just drove through Georgia, didn't spend a night there. And she blames me for that because we were going to, but we were at a place in Florida 
that I liked so much. We ended up staying there like four That's nights good. instead of three. And so that was our one night in Georgia. So well, I tell, I've, been, I've stayed this year. I've stayed in Georgia like four nights. I'm going back well, in September yeah. for a blues festival. And that's another reason why I wouldn't stress it. Cause I'm like, that'll be, that, that's an easy weekend trip or, you know, yeah, a long weekend. We're doing two days in, in the September. And we did, we did uh what Jekyll Island. We were there for like three days, mm-hmm. no two days mm-hmm. on our way to Alabama. So, I mean, yeah, I've, I've hit Georgia a Georgia's lot. Georgia's doable. Yeah. Definitely doable. It's like Atlanta's eight hours driving straight. Yeah. Yeah. Until you get there. Then it's eight hours driving through. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's horrible. But, uh, but yeah, we, uh, we covered some ground. And um, now, as far as Washington, we actually didn't go to Washington. These beers, I think, might have came from that same beer store. In Portland? Oh, about, yeah, the one, near, near they, Portland. Wouldn't, they wouldn't actually in, in Portland. It was uh, just over the border from California and Oregon. It was called... Uh, hop works and nice. dude they just had such a good selection and like these i mean i don't know about yours but this is delicious most of them were from their clearance rack so like when i found a clearance rack of damn good beer i was just like yes 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 because i was i was so used to paying california prices at that point i was just excited to see something less than like you know six Thanks. bucks for a can you, of beer you brought me all the the out-of-date beer thanks you're welcome Chris. well look at it is it, have, is it out of date i'm looking I don't know if this one has a date on it. This one doesn't it. have a date. Yeah, neither does this one. This oh, this was canned 4-5-2021. So this is actually when I got no, it. That's that not was, too bad. No, that's not bad at all. Especially when I got it, it would have been pretty fresh, actually. Yeah, this is one of those ones the label doesn't even go all the way around. So, I mean, I'm sure there's no date on this thing. Mm-hmm. But that's fine. It's fine. It's beer. Free to me. Yep. That's key. Free to me. That's, that's one of your favorite, uh, if I remember correctly, one of your... Five favorite five types favorite of beer. Beers, yeah. Free beer. Yeah. The one in my hand. The one that's in your number hand. one. That's your favorite. Right. Number two is the, is is a free beer. Mm-hmm. Number three is one I made. Uh number four is one that, you know, somebody's gonna buy me. No, number four would be, I can't remember. Number five is like whatever my favorite beer at the time is, which right now is probably dogfish heads. Uh, slightly mighty because I'm spending a lot of time on a river. That's a really good river. Beer. Easy. That's that's a true session beer, right? And it's and it's IPA, and it's only like 98 calories right. or something, it's, right? And it tastes like hoppy. Mm-hmm. It that's, smells hoppy. That is good. That is a solid one. Yeah. And then is so what is Pliny the uh, Elder's not in there? Is well, that your like true? That. Isn't that like your true? Favorite? Well, Pliny the Younger was my true favorite, but I don't know what it is now because they've changed everything. The reason I brought that up is because we actually we did go to like a brew. Uh, actually, it might have been a gastro pub or whatever. Some fancy joint they had like was known for the beers, and they did have Pliny the Elder. It was like it was like uh, a different kind of hop version or something, though. Yeah, they have some one offs now. Yeah, they opened a new brewery. Actually, I can. If only if there was a way for yeah. me to look it up, I could not only tell you the exact so, kind of hat. I so probably heady heady toppers on my top five. If actually heady beers toppers. I like, my top five beers I like are probably you know heady topper, Pliny the elder, double uh, dry hopped Pliny the elder, two hearted ale. That's what I had. Yeah, this was at Pita Kebab Gastro Pub, which was a f- oh dude, and the food was fantastic too. That was in Saint Visalia, California. So if you, have, I recommend it. If you're gonna put gastro pub in your name, your food better be really damn good. And it was, or don't. And the beer sl- I mean, they had plenty of the elder on, yeah. on draft. So Did they yeah, have blind pig. Good. That's another good one they make. I could, I could, you I could, could click, look. I could click on venue and look at all the beers I tried while I was yeah, there. Yeah. Although I don't know, I can't remember if we did. I don't think we even did a flight. I think I was just like, well, plenty of the elder, like done deal. I'm gonna drink that. Well, I was at Parkway the other day, and they had the new beers. Couple and a new seltzer. It's pretty good. Blackberry. Mm, ooh, yeah. Seltzers. They're all doing their uh, seltzers. Everybody's got. You caught it, man. Yeah. It's all sign like the homeless guy. A cardboard sign. It says, "Not every brewery has to make a seltzer." Yeah, and it's true. It and, but that being said, so but and you don't even like the brewery seltzers, no, because they make it's them, not. Yeah, they're too it, sweet and thick, and and it's not like the healthy. If you're gonna if you're gonna, if you're gonna be drinking. They don't get it. Craft. They don't you get it. You might as well like get a good craft beer because you're not going there to drink healthy. <laughs> right. But I think it's because it's they're trying to cater to a certain well, they try, you know, it's it's the highest growth segment of alcohol. Right now it's in competition with the RTDs, the ready to drinks. You know, they're putting liquor in the grocery store by making it ready to drink. So the alcohol mm-hmm. content's below 
I actually just tried a few of those yeah. over the weekend. Yeah. I got in, I, I, it was, yeah. I don't know if it was strictly because of that, but yeah, it was like, a, I think it was from, um, it was Devil's Backbone. It was yeah, like they're making those, a bunch of them. It was like yeah. a lemonade thing or whatever. Yeah. It wasn't even on untapped. I was trying to untap it and I was like, it's not even it's not on a here beer. yet. Yeah. Well, but they have, they have Mike's Hard Lemonade and crap on there. That's true. So maybe, I don't know. But anyway, that's the thing. But anyway, that's why they're trying to do it. But they think that, oh, we got to get on this bandwagon because it's doing so well. But the point is, the one that's doing well is 98 calories and zero carbs. You know, not the one that you put all the sugar in and now it's got 27 carbs, just like a beer. That's not what the seltzer thing's about. And very few breweries have figured that out. There was one in Nelson County. I can't remember the name of it. It's like halfway between Blue Mountain and Devil's Backbone on the left. I think what the problem is, is craft beer is set out to have stuff that tastes good. Right. And if it's going to taste good, it ain't going to be no, just five right. calories right. or whatever. And like, you know, it's just, it can't be done. At least not. What well, can be done. It's it just can't means won't. You, you need to have a lot of science and it's a lot of trial and error that craft breweries can't afford to invest in. In right, my opinion, right. well, I think that's what it is. And it's not only that, it's like, you know, I think, you know, you see a lot of stuff on the internet about people complaining about this segment or that segment, you know, and, and breweries have a kind of a, a male dominance thing. And a lot of ladies are like, well, you know, they don't treat us right. And, you know, and, then, and in many cases that is true, but the fact is, is that the reason it was male dominated, it's just like oil rigging and, and war and all these things where you have to lift really heavy weights and do things like that. And I'm not saying there's some women can do that. There are. And, you know, there's probably some men that are excellent hairdressers, but they're the exception to the rule. Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't see a huge amount, you know, there's not a lot of crossover in some of these industries. And now that being said, you know, now you can get your grain pumped over with an auger. Nobody even has to touch it. Yeah, It goes right in the thing. So you don't have all the heavy lifting you used to have. And that's why probably now more than ever, you're seeing more, more and more women. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, and, and a lot of them are, you know, because brewing is more of an art than a science, there is science to it, but it's more of an art mm -hmm. that, you know, I think they're bringing to it, you know, a lot, we're going to have a lot better beers because of it. I wholeheartedly agree. Speaking, Speaking of, of which, yeah, <laughs> what a great, let's finish these you, up you, you saw more. me took my last <laughs> sip and you knew, all right, this segment is about done. So, um, I don't know about you, man, but this matchless uh I, I don't know like i said I, I i didn't even google them i don't know much about them but i think this might be one to put on the radar if you're heading out to washington or even just on the west coast because like i said we didn't even make the washington and this beer got in my hand uh matchless's Raquel, you said right ray cow ray cow me this obviously it's a, a riddler kind of uh uh homage a hazy ipa it's it's our favorite style this one unfortunately or uh, uh fortunately unlike the one that you poured was just as advertised i mean look at that look at the lacing oh, on yeah. that man Pretty. this is this is a great beer man i mean just this is similar i noticed last week i think i was giving out four seven fives left and right i, I guess i'm going to continue that trend because this is just damn good damn good and haziness well i've got the plainsman by structured brewing and you know it's kind of tricky I thought that was, and what was Burt that? Reynolds, a, but did you is that a logger or what? What is yeah, that? Yeah, it's a logger. Okay, I thought it was Burt Reynolds, but it turns out it's Bozo the horse clown. <laughs> and uh, you know, it's just it's a logger. Sorry, not a huge fan of loggers, mm -hmm. and it's not even you know my expectation on a logger is crispness. It's not crisp. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I, it might yeah, it might have something to do with the condition. You know, it did. I don't know. It's, no, it's just a little too mouthfeely. It's a little too thick. It should have been a little. They should have let it attenuate you know a little bit of sweetness it should have been more dry and sharp but then that being said you know it's almost headed towards pale ale territory taste wise so they probably okay. used ale yeast to make it i don't know the lager that's usually what happens when that happens so i'm, yeah. I'm gonna give it a three seven five three seven five out of five on the not un gonna untapped drain scale it. which is uh that's what we like to use is the untapped app pretty handy dandy i referenced it earlier and i was able to look up where i was drinking that uh that Pliny the Elder. It's it's one of those. It's just one of many things that it's useful for. If you want to friend us on there, Drez Drinks is my handle. Huck's Beer Bus is his. We're gonna take a break, and then we'll should probably drink some more beer, right, Huck? I'm good with that. It's Bruce Day Tuesday on the Bear.